hello and welcome back. In today's video, I want to talk about mobile internet usage. And I want to talk about the pros and cons and compare to utilizing a mobile phone as a wireless access point when you use that hotspot mode or by tethering versus that of mobile routers. Router. Router. Something I've talked about on and off on the channel for the last year or so. Now, fair play, this video is thanks to a comment that came through last week from Ben Gorgon or Grogan. I'm so sorry if I butchered your surname there, man. But going through the comments there on YouTube, someone asked me about the difference between these two devices and ultimately which one best suits their needs. And I thought, you know what? That is a bloody good topic. So here we are. I'm going to talk about these devices. I'm going to talk about, again, their pros and cons. We're going to cover price. We're going to cover speed. We're going to cover clients, battery, and convenience. And hopefully help you decide which one best suits your needs. I've got a bit of a sore throat right now. So I'm sounding a little bit gravelly there. I do apologize. And again, we're still getting this new studio sorted out here. So again, if the sound quality is not optimal, I apologize in advance. But let's get straight into it. For those that aren't aware, the majority of modern mobile phones, by modern, I am talking at least five to seven years, the majority of modern mobile phones have a feature built into them where although they can access and connect to the Wi-Fi in your home or office, you can also use them to turn the phone into its own router, a wireless access point turn the phone into a router with its own accessibility and um, internet hotspot. On top of that, generally most of these devices will allow you to connect via USB or lightning or any kind of connection on the phone to a supported Windows, um, Mac, or maybe even some Linux systems as well, depending on their architecture, and allow you to utilize the internet on these devices directly onto your laptop. A number of us do it for work. I do it at trade shows and more. And it allows you to have a constant, easy, accessible, and controllable internet point that can be safe and you control and govern the rules. But in the last few years, we have seen a huge rise in these. These are mobile routers. These are ones that use a SIM card from your local data carrier, allow you to install a SIM inside. And instead of repurposing a mobile or your existing mobile and turning on the Wi-Fi, you can instead utilize these devices to carry the internet in your pocket. They come in a variety of sizes and a number of you that travel internationally, which I know has been somewhat limited during the pandemic, We'll see at airports lots of places, particularly um, in the east when we were doing some of the Computex stuff, we saw loads of these. In fact, a lot of the videos I recorded were utilizing one, a little router that you pay $5, five quid, 10 or whatever to get the internet every day unlimited in your pocket, utilizing 3G, 4G, and in some rare cases, 5G. Now, those routers are ones that they've just got a SIM inside, they've got very limited control. Today, I'm talking more about prosumer grade ones, ones that you buy yourself. And although they're not cheap, generally they are more expensive than traditional routers, they do allow a huge amount of flexibility and control. And a number of you that are thinking about buying these are probably already utilizing the hotspot on mobile phones and thinking, that's quite steep. Like this is the Netgear um, Nighthawk M1. It's about two, two and a half years old. And it still goes for about three, four hundred pounds. It does 4G SIMs. On top of that, we've got the most recent one that we reviewed here on the channel and I got for myself personally. This is the D-Link DWR2101. It's a 5G mobile router with a SIM card inside there unlocked. And that's already, again, about three, 350 nicker. Um, you know, in your own currency, that's what, $400 or whatever. And there's even a, a Nighthawk M5 version of this, which goes for seven to 800 pounds. And that's without the SIM card, without the contract, which is crazy. But when you think about how much a mobile phone costs outside of a contract, it kind of makes a bit more relative sense. So let's bash straight into that first one. Sorry, I hit the mic there. Um, price, obviously, in terms of price, the phone and the hotspot and using tethering is so much cheaper. First and foremost, you've already got this. So technically, it's not costing you any extra. You're still using the internet connection inside. You're still utilizing the mobile in your pocket. So you haven't spent any more than you already have. Of course, it's gonna win in terms of price. Having to get one of these generally means you're gonna have to spend a few hundred quid more to get the box and you're either gonna have to get another internet connection on a mobile SIM 
or you're gonna have to reuse the SIM in your phone or clone the SIM in your phone. So again, not convenient in terms of price, um, but, and for another view where price is gonna be very, very important, even these in their most basic form are still gonna set you back 80 to 100 quid in the most simplistic versions of mobile routers. So if you are thinking about price, you're gonna to wanna to give these a miss. But that, that money must count for something, you must get something out of that, which brings us on to our second point, speed. Now speed can be broken down really into bandwidth and performance. Well, we're just gonna use the label speed. Um, in terms of uh, bandwidth performance and that overarching heading speed, these things just give you so, so much more. Notwithstanding the fact that although this device has the internet, it's still utilizing the internet throughout, even when you turn it into a tethering or mobile hotspot, it's only got maybe in some cases two antennas inside a mobile phone. Some more modern phones have more sophisticated antenna and take advantage of Wi-Fi 6, but still nevertheless, even with that increased bandwidth, the amount of data that can be pushed through it efficiently is a great deal more limited than that of a mobile router. Mobile routers have more antenna, they have more hardware inside, they are geared towards fast transition of data with dedicated high performance and certainly um, more efficient and powerful um, network controllers inside and again, because a number of more modern ones take advantage of Wi-Fi 6, take advantage of 5G, take advantage of network connectivity in some cases with a number of them with one or two ethernet ports on board. The result is the overall bandwidth and the overall amount of data that can be pushed along into that bandwidth for performance is so, so much better on a mobile router. Next, let's talk about what you're gonna do with that bandwidth. What are you gonna do with all that data? Well, we wanna talk about clients, connected devices, mobile phones, iPads, laptops, all that kit that you're gonna be carrying with you, whether it's high performance cameras that will use Wi-Fi connectivity and all the stuff around you when you're on the go, which one of these is better for your client devices? Obviously the routers, not only because obviously the phone in itself is a client device, um, but when you're connecting with other client devices, generally you find that hotspots and tethering built into mobile phones cover far, far fewer uh, connected client devices, all of those devices we just mentioned at any given time. And the more devices you put connected to this, you're gonna make your phone work very, very hard in a way that it's not been designed to do. And the result is that each connected client will not only have a weaker experience than they would have on a dedicated router, but also as more clients arrive, that will degrade further. So in terms of not just the number of clients, but the overall experience of every client device, mobile routers will always rule the roost with a number of these devices supporting 30, 40, 50, 60 devices at the same time and give them a very, very good a simultaneous network experience. Which brings us on to battery life. Again, you're using this hardware, you need it to work when you're working and you need it to sit there and shut up when you're not using it. In terms of battery life, it will come as absolutely no surprise that mobile routers win the day there as well. For example, the Netgear, I'm sorry, the D-Link I have here has got a 5,200 odd milliamp battery inside. That's about 10 to maybe 12, 14 hours of utility of this device with that battery. Indeed, the network battery inside here, the, the Netgear here, is eight to 10 hours, even two years on. However, the mobile phone battery, because you're using it for other things, and when using a mobile hotspot, it uses significantly more power than when it's not. And that client device, it's like having a mobile phone that will last a day or two, but how long would it last if you were consistently making phone calls? The same can be said for utilizing a mobile hotspot or tethering. Now, of course, tethering, slightly different because it is able to power itself from the connected client, but remember, you are running a mobile setup, no mains power. So just because it's drawing power and keeping powered up, the client device is now losing power. Of course, that feature is available on the mobile routers, but that really isn't a good measurement of battery power when we are talking about how long it works standalone. And unsurprisingly, mobile routers win that round as well, which brings us on to our last point, convenience. And this is where mobile hotspots draw it back. 
the convenience of mobile hotspots and USB tethering for your internet connectivity cannot be understated. It is so easy when you're on the train, when you are on a plane to a lesser degree, of course, depending on the coverage and the area you're in. Whichever way you look at it, mobile phone tethering is so convenient. Whether you're connecting via USB or you are using it as a shared internet point for multiple client devices, it may not give the performance, it may not support the same number of clients, and it may not give the same throughput in its battery life, but you can't argue that this is significantly more convenient than this off the bat. These are heavier, they are larger, and they're gonna take up more room. And although they are not large, really, you know, when you compare these two, in your pocket, you're already carrying a phone, you're carrying your wallet, your keys, and of course, this is incredibly chauvinistic as an expression. You might have a, you might have a bag. Um, but it's still quite large and certainly heavier. This is about 230, 240 grams with the battery inside. That's a big old weight in your pocket, you know, near enough a quarter of a kilo in your pocket. Not easy, of course, if you've got a bag, easy. But even then, still not gonna be as convenient as a phone weighing in at about 100 to 150 grams. But this has been mobile hotspots and tethering versus mobile routers. Which one is best for you? They both have pros, they both have cons, and I hope this video helped you make the decision for you, whether it be for home or business. If you enjoyed this, click like. If you wanna learn more about these devices as we go through them, click subscribe, and do visit the link in the description over to NAS Compared, where we talk more and more about both of these sets of devices and go into a lot more detail about performance. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.